It was like a cloud was lifted, man, when the painkillers were out of my system for the first time in a long time. Just felt like a new man, like everything from energy, sleep, pain relief, recovery. A couple of weeks later, I was sitting in a cafe and I just had this idea. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to make the world's first range of fully certified for drug tested athletes, range of CBD, mushrooms, and nootropics. By the time I was in like my mid 20s, I'd gone through like quite a tough period in my life when my dad had passed away. I was really struggling to like commit myself to my rugby career. I sort of lost motivation and I was trying to numb the pain of losing my dad who I loved so much. I was like abusing alcohol and you know like trying to escape through like gambling and all these kind of types of activities. You can go after anything and express yourself from passion, from love, from creativity, from connection without the fear of failure because the fear of failure is not, not real, you know? The fear of failure is only there if, if you believe that you're just this individual, that everything like external is, is what you're reliant on for your value. Just quickly before we get started, guys, if you've been enjoying the podcast, can I please ask that you consider leaving a five-star review and subscribing or whatever platform you've been listening. It really helps the podcast grow. I do think this world is set up for like, to portray a picture of success that looks like following a certain path mm. and what that often does is it creates a mindset of like you got to follow this like mainstream mm. narrative whereas i think the people that break through that kind of perspective are usually people that question that yep. path and that narrative and then they realize like there's actually unlimited opportunities out there the day um, the day and by the way joe we're just going to roll from here by the way brother so um where the day you realize that is the day that your life changes forever. Yeah. And then, and like for me, I, we were talking a little bit off air and I will introduce our guest in a second, but we're just going to rock through the day. I realized that, you know, what everything I told you in school doesn't fucking add up to me. Yeah. Like I, I went my whole schooling life thinking I'm going to be a lawyer. Yeah. I got to uni two weeks in, I fucking hated it. Yeah. And then I took me five years to discover what business really is. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. Anyway, guys, I just want to leave that in there. So we, for first guest, we're, we're in London. We're doing our Europe, Europe, Europe summer. So uh, we've been about three weeks since we put a podcast down, but this is one that was worth making the trip for. We've got Grayson Hart. A lot of you might know him from his rugby days. So we got another successful, successful athlete, uh, played for the likes of the Junior All Blacks, which rugby isn't that big of a deal in, 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 in NZ, but we'll, we'll move on. So Junior <laughs> All Blacks, uh, the Waratahs, who obviously people in Australia, we know the Auckland Blues and the Super Rugby Comp as well. Um, later on, moved to Scotland, had a successful career there representing the national team. But what I want to talk to you about, obviously we'll touch on the, the, your journey as an athlete, because we can't talk about the grace and heart as an entrepreneur without talking about your roots and, and how you got there, but you've created an awesome brand called pure sport, absolutely incredible products in the CBD, uh, nootropic space, all sorts of mushrooms. And I want to talk to you about your journey with that, how you came across this industry, why you're so passionate about that and the business journey you've gone on and you're already alluded to it previously is like, dude, you didn't know what you were getting yourself into when you got into business, but it's been one of the best things that you've done to force you to grow and step outside of your comfort zone. So thanks for coming on, bro. I'm, I'm keen to chat to you for the next hour or so and get to know you and your journey, but welcome brother. Welcome to Life, Money and Love. Man, it's good to be here and yeah. I'm honored to be on, man. I'm a big fan of what you're doing. Thanks, and, bro. Uh, yeah, man. Big fan of the guests you've had on as well. So yeah. really grateful. And that was a Brody, you made you made me sound way better at rugby than I actually <laughs> was, man. But thank you. No, so <laughs> I, because we'll get into your journey first. I want to get clear. Sometimes people want to know kind of who you are, and as we we're talking about before, Australia has a lot of regulations and stuff. If you want to move in and sell your sort of product, so the business Pure Sport might not be known as well in Australia, but it's one of the leading wellness brands in the UK. You've had incredible growth. I've been spending the last few hours on your website looking at everything that you you're about and and all the research and the, and, and the way that you break down scientific things in a really simple way for layman's to understand. So I can't wait till we've got access to this sort of cool stuff in Australia, but in your own words, how would you explain pure sport and, and your products? Yeah. So pure sport came to life, um, through years as a rugby player, utilizing painkillers and, and mm. overusing them. Cause that was kind of the kind of paradigm that we were in. It was, you do whatever it takes to stay out there on the field and train and compete. And, one day I just woke up, man, and I was like, holy heck, like, I'm so unhealthy. I've mm. been taking six to eight, like, really heavy painkillers for a couple of years on end now, and that's just no way to live. And started looking around for for what the different alternatives were, and, and that was one of the first times that I found, like, we're so immersed in a perspective that's, like, in the little bubble that we're in, and there was this whole other world out there, which was, like, these natural alternatives, um, mushrooms, nootropics, mm. CBD, um, 
like you know extracts from the cannabis plant that aren't psychoactive and that just fascinated me um and then sort of cut a long story short i'm sure we can go into bits and pieces uh, if you'd like to go into it further but i started utilizing these products uh off my own accord we we're, we're always told you should only use certified um supplements when you're a drug tested athlete I was just at the point, man, I just couldn't do painkillers anymore and mm -hmm. I chose to make my own decision. Um, and and so to to break that down while I was on the painkillers, I've got what they call a degenerative knee. So uh, all the cartilage was wasted away in my knee um, after a couple injuries, lots of cortisone injections, that, which further accelerates the wastage of cartilage um, to the point it was just full of fluid, like just very, very painful all of the time. Um, so that's why I was on the painkillers. So found these mushrooms, nootropics, um, CBD as an alternative, utilized them, found like, I was like, it was like a cloud was lifted, man, when the painkillers were out of my system for the first time in a long time. Just felt like a new man, like everything from energy, sleep, pain relief, recovery. Um, and then I was told by my team, they found I was taking these products and they said like, you're not allowed to take those. Um, and I said, look, I'm my own human. I want to make my own choice. I want to take the risk. And I've done my due diligence. I know the risks and it was minimal if I was choosing the right products. Uh, but they said no. And then I remember it was probably like a couple of weeks later, I was sitting in a cafe and I just had this idea. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to make the world's first range of fully certified for drug tested athletes, range of CBD, mushrooms and nootropics. Had no idea what, <laughs> how to start or how to start a business or yeah. what it meant to try and build a business. But I didn't care. I was just like so passionate about that opportunity and, and, and believing it and also wanted to solve my issue, which mm. is not being able to take these products. So I wanted to resolve that by getting the first range of these products certified and then saw it as a great opportunity to help my fellow athletes, but also utilize sport to break down that kind of stigma around things like um, cannabis extracts and mushrooms and these things and go away from what we I call a quick fix mentality that isn't actually treating any kind of um, root cause of any issues and, and we're just masking the pain and the issue to to one of a, like a much more natural, sustainable mm. and holistic approach through these natural products. So yeah, that's how it began. And we're talking about the naivety, which is probably a good thing for you moving into this. Like you said, you're a rugby player, you're an athlete your whole life. That's all you knew. You didn't, you know, do the corporate career. You didn't necessarily do uni or any, any study your school experience, you've, you've spoken on record saying, you know, you probably didn't have the best experience in school, getting into trouble a little bit. How did you start making those, or like what were the first steps you did to start looking into this and start exploring how do I actually make this a business? I think it, all of my like experiences in the past that a lot of them were like amazing opportunities through my rugby career, but also a lot of like real difficulties that I faced in my life. Mm -hmm. It kind of like molded a perspective in me um and l like by the time i was in like my mid-20s um i'd gone through like quite a tough period of my life when um my dad had passed away uh i was really struggling to like commit myself to my rugby career i sort of lost motivation and i was trying to numb the pain of losing my dad who I loved so much. Um, I was like abusing alcohol and, you know, like trying to escape through like gambling and all these kind of types of activities. And I came out the other side of that by really like exploring, trying to understand like who we really are as human beings rather than like the concepts and the ideas that we're told that we are, you know, like, which is where we're, all we are is this, physical body that, you know, everything about the value of who you are is dependent upon like what you do, what you have, uh, you know, your relationships and, and don't get me wrong, all those things, they, they can be important to like our well-being and our purpose and, and all of that. But I, I, I really had all my eggs in that basket, like my rugby career and, and, and these types of things that seemed to be like the source of my value. And when it wasn't going well and I'd lost my dad, I felt like, so down and out and worthless and it was only through really exploring to try and understand like who i was and finding the like i guess underlying knowledge of who i am as a, as a human rather than this kind of like external concept uh that's that that's honestly been the 
thing that molded me most in terms of mm. like my outlook on life. And it's, it's, for me, it's really down to my outlook on life that allowed me to start pure sport because I started to learn, like, for example, when I started out and I first got my pro rugby contract, I was just playing the game. I loved the way that I knew how, and it was a pure expression of like myself. Like it was just pure joy. It was, it was like the own, I had a very challenging upbringing. Um, rugby was the only place I felt at home and that I felt like I belonged and I just expressed it. Then when it became professional and I started to get into that system of like outcomes and contracts and like playing on TV and getting praise from people and all these things, I started, I realized that I lost that sense of freedom and love mm. and expression and going through those difficulties after losing my dad and then really struggling with that loss of that love and that freedom. Um, that's what woke me up to going, putting my value back to that kind of innate or, or, or sort of underlying surface of who we really are. Um, that for me, like we're always fulfilled. So you, you can't, if you know, that's who you are, you can't lose. Like, now my outlook is like you can go after anything and express yourself from passion, from love, from creativity, from connection without the fear of failure because the fear of failure is not not real. Mm. You know, the fear of failure is only there if, if you believe that you're just this individual that everything like external is, is what you're reliant on to, for your value. So like in all honesty, man, I honestly didn't know anything about business. All I, I just believed in this product and I, and I was like, I'm just going to find a way to create it. And out of that passion and love and uh, expression, I just reached out to all sorts of different people, found their experts could help me with the manufacturing process, with the regulation process, with the um, certification for the drug tested athletes process. And then from there, I, I, I actually believe it was like just pure passion and spreading the word by word of mouth that started our business um and it just sort of built momentum from there and then the rest of the bits about business i've just learned along you the way along the way and everyone asks like everyone's trying to find the best productivity hack but honestly the biggest productivity hack is just find something you love and you'll find a way yeah you don't yeah. need to you don't need to wake up and like going back to the rugby when you were doing it for the love of the game and for the freedom and and, and to get into the flow state and just be mm. you're not having to motivate yourself but when it becomes about what are the outcomes? Where do we finish on the ladder? How did I play? Media scrutiny, good, bad, yeah. whatever. And and it puts you in your head. It takes you away from like the pureness of just being a human being and experiencing this life. Yeah, man. And I think the way that this world that we live in, in this particular, in like the Western culture and the, the way the school and the education system works, it kind of ingrains it in our minds that like the outcome is what defines who we are. Whereas actually when you think back to when you're just a little kid who didn't get those concepts yet, like those concepts hadn't stuck in your mind, you literally just expressed yourself mm. and your like potential and your ability to apply yourself was like infinite. Yeah. And then, but then it's only later when these concepts start to sink into our minds that we're told about the outcomes and what that means to how good you are or not good. That's when we start to get bogged down, you know, but, it's a whole probably another topic of conversation, but like, yeah, I really do believe the system of education and like work, uh, like, you know, that kind of rat race mentality and that more chasing the mortgage in the house and, you know, that whole like structure that we're sort of taught from such a young age it, it is one of the most stifling things. Mm. And it's become even more clean, clear to me being here. And, and I absolutely love, like, I love London. Um, I, I can get, a, I'll probably get a British passport just so I can come and go as I please. I really love it. But one thing that became clear to me in a bit of a, in a little bit of a way that I'm like, oh shit, I'm so glad I'm in the position I am is like London is like Sydney on steroids. Like mm -hmm. you come here and it's just like, everyone is in this. And I say everyone, a lot of people, the city, you feel this energy of like this massive corporate machine. And I was thinking like, how many people realize the life they're living and how many really 
truly chose that life themselves rather mm. than just followed what everyone else does into it. And it's a scary thought. And that's why I have this podcast and I love having people on a lot, are business owners, other people, are athletes, whatever, artists. I love ch chatting to people that have realized that, hey, that way isn't going to make me happy mm. and have found their own way to do life and 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 progress and experience you know, what it means to be a human being. And I think our time on the, this planet is limited regardless of, of your beliefs. And it's like the sooner someone can wake up and realize that your life can be what you want it to be, it's it's like the day you're really born again. Yeah. So that's why I'm passionate about these conversations. And I know you speak about the freedom of playing rugby as a kid and, you know, not thinking too much about, you know, why doing it. And I agree with that. And I think there's a beautiful freedom in that. But also I feel like all great ambition is born out of some form of lack or some form of insecurity, whether it be conscious or unconscious, unconscious rather, often when, when we were a child. Now, obviously growing up in NZ, everyone wants to play rugby. So that I'm not surprised in any way that that's what you wanted to do. But what do you think it was for you? What was that dream to be an all black giving you? Like what, what, why did you want that so bad? <laughs> All right, guys, just quickly, I've got some news. I've spent close to the past 18 months building the ultimate program that takes you through the complete process. And I mean the complete process of launching and scaling your very own e-commerce brand from zero all the way up to a million dollars plus per year. And now with this program, what you're going to get access to is 15 modules with over 100 training videos and 23 hours of in-depth content, taking you through everything you need to know to build a successful e-com brand. And this is the important part. This isn't just stuff that you can look up on YouTube. This is stuff I've taken from real lessons and experiences building Happy Skin Co. from zero all the way up to an eight figure per year brand. You're gonna get access to loads of custom tools, templates and calculators that I've used to build and run Happy Skin Co. There's gonna be one-on-one -on -one mentoring with myself and other expert coaches. And there's also weekly group Q&A calls with myself to make sure you're feeling completely supported throughout the entire process. And now what I've learned from consulting to everyone from people starting their very first e-commerce brand, all the way up to brands already doing seven figures plus per year is that there's a process and a framework to follow if you want to be successful with e-com. Now, if this is something you're interested in, hit the link below and go to join.viralbrandbuilder.com. All the information's there and you can book a call directly with me. Otherwise, send me a DM and we can chat there. Anyway, let's get back to the pod. Yeah, man, I, I do think like, I can actually vividly recall the moment in my mind where it was like, oh, like, I got to take this rugby serious now. And it was, I think it was, I can't remember exactly what time of the year, but it was my last year of school. Mm. And I was doing nothing at school. Man. I was just mucking around and playing rugby and just getting told off and getting kicked out of class and just having fun with my friends and just playing rugby. That was it. But I was still just playing rugby for the love of it. And I was yeah. good and I like, you know, not, I was making rep teams and I was doing well, but I wasn't like, being like, I want to be an all black. Like mm. I, I, it was more like in New Zealand, like if you're, if you play rugby and you love rugby and you're decent rugby, you're like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to be an all mm. black. But like, it's more just part of our culture. Yeah. I never really consciously believed that I could be a professional rugby player. I just was playing rugby and I was like pretty good at it and I loved it. But I remember this one point, probably halfway through the, my final school year, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Mm. Like, and the reason I had that is because I wasn't doing anything school-wise or I didn't have any ambition to go to university. I'd done some work uh, like throughout the holidays down at the ports of Auckland, um, unloading container ships with my high-vis and my steel caps. And like, look, there were some amazing characters down there and dudes that were actually like had built some great careers as like foremans and crane drivers and stuff like that. But like, I did, it wasn't, I didn't, I was like, passionate about that man I was like nah and but that felt like my only option mm. and I was like I don't I don't actually really want to do that man and it was also quite demoralizing being like when I went to the food town over the road from the ports for lunch that was like oh sh like that's like four hours of my work gone on on lunch you know that's like my hour four hours of hard work um so I, I wasn't that inspired to be gone down that path <laughs> and also growing up as I mentioned uh earlier like I'd had faced some really tough experiences and I don't look back on my childhood in a time of like thinking I felt sorry for myself because I actually think children are very resilient. Like there's kids in really, really horrific environments, much, much worse than what I was in, that like their outlook on life is amazing. Like like we can learn so much from children. But um, 
as you start to get older, you start to realize some of the things that have gone on and, and what's happening in the way that you've been raised is probably not great. Um, and one of the challenges that we had growing up was my parents were separated. Um, we grew up just with my dad. My dad throughout his whole life had a lot of addiction issues. Um, and with his addiction issues, you know, he struggled to, to have employment. Um, so, you know, we were, you know, facing financial challenges over and over and over. Um, and, you know, seeing my dad, someone who's, someone that's struggling with addiction, the majority of the time it's, it's this, these issues with their mental health, you know, it's a, it's a, it's not the substance that's the issue. It's why they are mm. chasing that escape through that substance. And so with that, you know, my, my dad was very up and down. Um, and, and that, that's a tough thing for a kid, man. Like the person that you love and that you look up to seeing them in days where they can't come out their room for three days because they're depressed, you know, like makes me emotional when my dad's passed away. And it makes me emotional thinking about those times of like, like all you wanted was for your dad to be okay, you know? And that actually at the time, as a kid, you're not worried about yourself. You're like, I just want my dad to be okay. But then when you get older and you grow up and you start to think about who you are and what's molded you and your own kind of challenges that you face internally and externally, you start to realize, holy shit, like that shit took its toll on me, you know? Um, but through seeing the struggles my dad had, I, I was, I wanted to make something better of my life, you know, and I didn't do well at school, but I didn't. And I was always told like I was disruptive and that, you know, I was got, got put in lower classes and stuff like that, but I always had this thing in me and I think it got taken as arrogance by the teachers, but I kind of felt, and I was a real smart ass as well, which didn't make it, it wasn't helpful, but when they would make out like I was an idiot, I would think, I would, I don't want to be like you though. Like, I think you're kind of an idiot, you know, like, whereas there was other teachers who didn't think I was an idiot. They saw the potential. They just saw I was maybe had my challenges and I was, mm. you know, disruptive or couldn't pay attention. They would have time for me. Like, and they were the ones that I felt, oh, like, I kind of, we're on the same wavelength, you know? And I, I don't know. I just, I think through all those experiences, I wanted to prove people wrong that I wasn't an idiot, that I just didn't believe in that system and I didn't, I, I wasn't cut out for it. Um, and I, I, I truly did believe I had potential to express and goodness to give to the world. And my, my path that arose to me in that final year of school is like, I'm going to just give everything to become a rugby player. And I literally did. And it was the first time in my life where I had a direction and I was like, I'm fucking giving this everything. Yeah. And um, it was amazing because like my dad was backing me. My brother was backing me. You know, they were like, what are you going to do when you finish school? I was like, I just want to be a rugby player. And they're like, okay, well, like we'll get your gym program. You can train, get some protein powder. You go down the park, we'll do passing, kicking. And, and like, I didn't have any contract out of school. I didn't, wasn't in any academy. My dad just let me for the first, however, like six months outside of school, I literally just trained. Yeah. And he helped me train. My brother helped me train. And my brother would be like emailing like the different provincial academies and be like, oh, would you give this guy a trial? And they'll like, nah, nah. And then one day there was an injury in a um in a trial game and they needed someone to just fill in. And then I played and then the Auckland coach saw me play and came up and he offered me a contract like straight away. So that's yeah, it was it was literally and that was the first time in my life that I learned like if you really go after something like there's actually unbelievable opportunity, you know, in, in terms of the mental health piece as well, that you were, you were speaking about the one thing that always helps me if I'm ever, what I've realized, cause I'm, I, I've reflected a lot on, you know, what makes me, me and why I am who I am. And one thing I've realized whenever I'm starting to just not feel myself, not feel cause I've had pretty solid mental health nearly my, nearly my whole life. I'm pretty, really grateful for that. But I've had moments where that's dipped and I haven't mm. felt motivated my, my, like myself. I haven't felt, you know, connected to, to my authentic self and my confidence. I'm, and generally, generally always a really confident person. What I've realized, whatever always gets me out of that rut is I need to get clear on what my goals are. And, and that thing, that word you said, direction, mm. if you're ever feeling 
lost in life, to me, one of the biggest things you can do is 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 refocus and refine the direction you want to go. Because mm. like you said, you have that big goal or that big view of life and it's something that you really care about, not your parents, not your schoolmates, not, you know, society, something that you really want to do. Mm. I truly believe that that's one of the biggest biggest hacks in terms of managing your 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 state mm. is finding that thing and going after it now mm. how do you, how would you explain your relationship to to mental health today as someone who you said went through went through your challenges like everyone does um through your childhood losing your father who was an extremely influential figure in your life early to mid twenties, which for a guy is an extremely, you know, formative period where it can really dictate how you go, what direction your life goes for the rest of your life. How would you explain that relationship to mental health today? And has it changed as you've matured over the years? Yeah, I think like the biggest thing I've learned is I do feel it's maybe more of a, a male trait and especially, um, I don't know, there's something about, you know, someone like yourself who, who's been so driven with your business and, you know, like people who are professional athletes, it takes like this real like single-minded like focus and and commitment to achieve like your, you know, your goals. Um, with that, when you're struggling, often the default is to go back to that drive and just try keep doing shit. And one of the biggest things that I've learned is like sometimes you got to like be able to zoom out, you know, and not just like keep doing the same shit over and over and over to try get yourself out of how you feel. Sometimes you actually just got to step back and look at like maybe I need to make some changes here or maybe I need to reprioritize some certain things in my life because I think what I've learned about myself is like, I, I, I'd rather like out of sheer like will and drive try and get work my way th out of a challenging time mm. mentally rather than just be like hold on like why don't I just step back for a minute and review how I'm living my life and you know I think some of the things that come up for me when I do do that is like what are my priorities? Like what am I doing to look after myself, you know? And because um, like you said, like you've got a goal and you've got drive, but I think what creates that feeling of clarity of mind and well-being is finding joy and purpose in the process. And and to me that joy and purpose in the process is the same thing that we're talking about when I was saying when I was a little kid and I was just free playing rugby. Like I was training for hours and hours, but it didn't feel like training. I was just out there present and free mm. and work, I was working hard, but I was free. So it's like, but sometimes when you're just so focused only on the goal and the outcome, you don't, you're not able to step back and just reflect on, but like, how am I going about that working towards that goal? And being able to zoom out and, and look at that for me has been a huge learning because um, I have learned, I have the trait and I think many other people have that trait of just trying to work through challenging times. And that's a good thing to have, but also when it gets to the point where you're just banging your head against the wall mm -hmm. and you're feeling shit day after day and you're digging yourself a hole, you need to be able to be like, what am I doing? How am I eating? Am I training? Like what are some of the habits that are forming out of this that difficult time that probably aren't that good for me because your mind's also very good at like justifying things. Mm. You know, if you start drinking lots more or your mind will be like, no, it's good, man. You're having fun. Like you're partying. It's good. You hang out with your mate, you're catching up. But then you've got to be able to question, but what is the underlying motivation of that? Is it out of balance? Okay. What do I need to do? You mean, like, how am I eating? Cause my mind as a business, um, you know, uh, with my business now and how relentless that is, I can be like, no, nah, no, nah, but I'm in a rush and I'm busy. So I like, that's why my diet's not that good. And it's like, nah, bro, like what's important to you? You got to be well now. You can't just live life like a means to an end, mm. you know? So like being able to strip it back and find the meaningful elements and the presence and the process actually sometimes propels you further towards your goals than just that head down and fucking slogging you can, away. You can use 
you can lose years like that and not mm. even realize you've been a passion mm. passenger in your own life. And something we've been speaking about and I speak about a lot is, you know, you follow people, follow these, you know, everyone I've been guilty of it. I'm sure you have it passed. You'd be guilty of, you know, being a prisoner to a decision that wasn't your societies mm. or expectations or whatever. But why I feel like the zooming out thing that you spoke about is really important as well, because we change what we want changes. Our motivations change. Mm. We mature. You don't want to be a prisoner to a decision you, you made five years ago. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you've got to question, wait, why am I doing it this way? Why am I doing this exact thing? Why did I start? Okay. Because of that, is that something mm. that's still truly authentically what yeah. I want right now? Or do I, do I pivot? It's all right to yeah. change, go in a new direction. Yeah. And I think again, it's coming back to understanding who you are. Like, if you really know who you are, you you know that you don't need that much to be okay. <laughs> the concepts of all these things that you need get formed, like, and they seem to be real. And that's what holds us in places and positions of, you know, not wanting to make change out of fear because you might have to start from here or, mm. you know, um, whereas actually, like, if you can look, like, deep within yourself and know that there's all these concepts of who you are and what you need, but they're not real. And you come back to that like place that's within us all that's actually present and free and constantly there behind all the noise. If you come back to that, what you can see is I can make a change or I can pivot or I can do something different and I will be okay. Like I will be okay. And like if, if you come from that place, again, like the, the, the possibilities are infinite, you know, it's, and it's, it's within us all. It's not like some special majestic place that like gurus and sages have access to. It's the presence you feel when you're, you know, like when your mind's so busy and you're stressed and you're bogged down, you go out for a run or something and you just feel clear. Mm. People think that the run causes that. It's not the run. That's who you are, but you've just given your, that activity has given your mind a break from attaching to all these concepts. 100%. And if we start to explore like, okay, who am I really? And what is that place? And how do I tap in and know that that's me? The more we do that, the better our decisions are, the more we stop ourselves getting limited by mm. like the concepts that society's given us. 100%. And with that as well, like no one wants to be a flaky person where, you know, you're changing life directions every couple of weeks and you, and you give up too quickly. But also I feel like we've taken that too far and at times we can feel like changing our minds or, or shifting direction mm -hmm. is a weakness. But if, but if you're following your, your intuition or your gut or what's truly right for you, that's, that's actually a strength yeah. and we shouldn't fear doing that, but, but we so often do now you, you mentioned something before, which I'd like to get your take on if you've thought about kind of why that is. You mentioned when you're in school, for whatever reason, even though like the teachers are meant to be seen in these authority figures, something within you realized that I don't really care so much what you think because I don't want the life you have. So why would I, you know, take advice and let my, you know, what makes me feel good be dictated by you. What what do you think that was for you to kind of have that feeling at, at a young age? Maybe you didn't fully understand it, but still to have that feeling at a young age, there's there's something to that. Yeah. I don't I, I actually don't know the answer. And like I couldn't help it. Like mm. I used I didn't want to be naughty. Like I didn't I liked the feeling of like being told like well done. I really did. And I think the way I grew up and the troubles and the challenges and, you know, the, 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 the struggles that my dad faced and what that meant for how we were raised and stuff, I didn't get that much, like, pats on the back. You know, like, don't you want, like, my dad was my hero. He loved us. He had so much love and kindness for us. But he wasn't necessarily, like, equipped to, like, you know, communicate and raise us in a way that we had sort of like structures and discipline and feedback and even like meaningful conversations, you know. Um, so I think when you're raised like that, you crave like feedback or a pat on the back or like just well done. And I think that's also why I love rugby so much because that was one of the places where people were like, man, well done. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like that feels good. Um, of course. Yeah. And so – I didn't want to be bad. I actually wanted pats on the back, but there was just something in me and it's been in me my whole life. And it even, I even struggled in my rugby career with it. When people would be saying things in such certainty 
in such a factual way that my mind just didn't see it that way. I, from a young age, I'll just be like, but it's not, it can't just be that way. You know, like, what about this? Because I would like see things or think things or question things. And it was almost like I found like they didn't like that. Mm. you know and then so I'd kind of then get like rolled up by it and challenge it and that's been one of the things I don't know I've always had I've always wanted to like question things and challenge things and like I, I remember one time one of my teammates uh when I was like 26 or so and 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 trust me I loved rugby and I really wanted to do well in my rugby career and one of my teammates came up and he's like Grayson like why are you trying to be different man and I was just like like what like what do you mean I didn't understand what he meant. Like, I wasn't trying to be different. Like, I couldn't help but there was times where I'd like question things or I'd see something in a different way or I don't know. But I, I don't know where or how, where that arose from, but it's just something that's in my like DNA. Yeah, I, I asked because I was I was similar and I, I wanted to know if you knew, knew I had an idea about why because like I was, I got on, I'd say with, you know, 80, 90% of my teachers. I was, I was, I was good in school. I was, you know, you know, in the top one, if not top two or three all the way through school. So I had a good school experience, but one thing I've had that thing within me where if I don't respect you, and this is going back to a kid and I wasn't a, I wasn't a HK. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, wasn't a naughty kid, but there were certain teachers where they would say, this is the way you do it. And because I said so, but mm -hmm. just because you said, so I, I, I I'm yeah. like, I can't follow. And I'd even point them out and say, Hey, what about this? And they didn't have the answer. So they would kick me up. And I just think like, I, I can't, I can't be around that thing, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, I feel like all kids are born with that natural curiosity to question mm. things and it gets kind of pushed out of us, yeah. pushed, pushed out of kids really easily. Now, another question I wanted to ask, and look, you went through an extremely traumatic experience, losing your father, like you said, it was your hero, maybe didn't tick every single box who, whose parents start, do. But I don't know if you've thought about this upon reflection of you've gone deeper into your self growth journey, but my question is that was a trigger for you to realize that, you want to experience life, you being authentic and not being dictated by all these external validations. Have you thought about for people that would come to you for advice who, you know, can't generate this traumatic experience to help them have that pin drop moment? Uh, is there anything that you could recommend for people that are struggling to, you know, because it's one thing to say it and understand it, but to live it and truly get mm. it is a completely different thing. Would you have any advice on, you know, some steps or things people could do to help remove that yeah. external noise? Yeah, I, I I think like there are a lot of people that have had like a moment of like really needing to question who they are and what they're about that have that has progressed them onto like a path of like more clarity and fulfillment that have gone through like very, very traumatic experiences. Um but there's also a huge number of people that have that same realization just from ongoing low level discontent and and there are people that get to that point of like needing to question what they're doing and why they're doing it and how they're doing it because they're able to come to that point because they just felt so discontent for so long and I actually think but then on the flip side there's the scary thing is I think there's a huge majority of our current population that are just living in low level discontent and discontent and finding you know like sporadic moments of joy in consumerism um partying and you know like those types of activities that have like fleeting moments of, of fulfillment um and so what i would say is like if like question yourself like how do you truly feel about life like do you feel fulfilled and i think my biggest learning was when I really didn't, I was really struggling. I thought my success in my career was what was missing. And I searched for that and that outcome to make me feel better. And, but what I've realized is like, you can achieve amazing things. I remember I made my international rugby debut and it was all I'd ever dreamed on my whole life was to be an international rugby player. I remember sitting in the hotel room, don't get me wrong, I was proud and it was exciting and I was doing well. I remember sitting in the hotel room and being like, holy shit, like I don't feel any different as a human being. I don't feel more fulfilled. Like, what do I do? And moments like that and trying to learn from other people that have had those types of moments make you question, 
what am I going after in life and how am I doing that? And and my biggest advice to people would be to question that on a daily basis. Mm. You know, and like what you'll, if you do that, what you'll be able to find is you might not love your job, but you, you don't, you no longer have to see it as a means to an end. Find simple joys and simple processes like when you're having your lunch break, put your phone down, like enjoy your food, enjoy like just the space, the freedom, enjoy your commute to work, like like put something into your schedule, into your routine that's for you, like your exercise, reading, like we're all so like, we want shit so quickly nowadays and we've gone away from like just doing stuff that's actually like good for us, you know, and like re evaluate what you prioritize because the the way that our world's taught us to prioritize things is like it's all a means to an end mm-hmm. and we're i think the majority of us are going through our lives like with low level discontent trying to achieve something believing that's what's going to make us feel better but i but i can promise you i know people that have achieved so much more than me and i know you can testify to this that's not the answer. The answer is to find the peace within yourself. And that's there within all of us. Yeah. I, t- I tell you where I'm at in life is like, I'm 29 now, almost, almost 30. And while I've, I've, I've been, you know, reasonably successful, I've done some cool shit in my life. And, and something I realized is like, in order to find happiness, to find worth, you know, the default for a lot of people, myself included, I'm sure for, for stages of your life is be like, okay, if I co- can go and achieve X, Y, Z, I'll feel great. And I had the ability to do that. And I was, you know, I've, I've done well in school and then, you know, I did the acting thing and you had an agent and then I experienced some success with Happy Skin Co. And I, and I made a bit of money. And then I see so many people make a bit of money in business. And then they're just like, I want more money. I want more, I want more, I want more. But there's been some shift in me in the last year, two years where I've realized that no, me continually going out and hunting the next biggest thing, because that makes me feel good. Mm isn't the way I want to go. I want to be able to find the the beauty in the simple things like mm-hmm. you speak about, but it's this overwhelming, you know, weight of the world on our shoulders competing against that. Mm-hmm. It's it's way easier said than done. But I think like if you can, there's a statement I, I heard recently and I think it's really powerful and I think it's it's a good place for people to start if they're not sure. Okay. Yeah. Everyone talks about this self growth, growth journey. Where do I start? And it's a statement, if I'm brutally honest with myself, dot, dot, dot. Mm-hmm. And just look look in the mirror or close your eyes and just be honest. If I'm brutally honest with myself, I, yeah. and it'll bring some shit up, man. Yeah, for man. For sure. Nah, that's like, and the, and the more that we're able to truly do that mm. with with honesty, uh, it's pretty confronting. Yeah. Like, man, it's, yeah, it really is. But don't avoid what comes up. Because <laughs> yeah. if you truly want to, I actually think the biggest like ambition in every human being is to feel happy and fulfilled. But the thing that we've got wrong, I feel, is that we think that that comes from things or achievements or material, you know. And you ask anyone who has an unbelievable relationship, their relationship is unbelievable because they are fulfilled within themselves they're not searching for the fulfillment in their partner. You ask anyone that loves their career, because every career's got real tough bits in it too. You know, you might just see the external element like uh, of of someone's success in business or as an athlete or in whatever industry, and they'll be like, oh, I want that. Like, that's amazing. But there's a lot of shit too that comes with that. But the people that love it, that feel happy and feel fulfilled, they know that, that thing that they do isn't what makes them. You know, it's an expression of their already innate fulfillment. Yeah, I I agree. And and I put a lot of shit on school and the education system at times, but there's one thing that they had spot on that I didn't get. And it's exactly what we're talking about now. I don't know if you learned about it. For me, it was like the theme all the way through year 12. It's it's the journey is the reward, not the destination. Mm, mm. And it's like, fuck, the older you get, the more you experience life, the truer it is. And that's why it's like, there's things that I can do that will make more money in the next six mm-hmm. to 12 months than, than having a podcast and having these sorts of conversations. But I'm really am trying. And it took me a, a bit of an ego check to, to accept that I don't want to just chase money and chase zeros in my bank account. I want to, 
if I can wake up every day and I'm not at the point that I love every single thing I do, it's, it's obviously a process for everyone like you and me. If I can wake up every day and just enjoy what I do mm-hmm. and I have enough money to have the freedom to kind of do what I want, like mm-hmm. I don't need to buy a fucking Rolex every week mm-hmm. and I need to, you know, fly, fly first class. But if I can wake up every day and genuinely be excited for what I get to do mm-hmm. each day, I'm happy. Yeah, 100% man. And like to have that though, like you don't need to be a wealthy person. You know, you don't. And, and you would admit, and I have met people who are extremely wealthy, but they've not been able to question, for example, what you've questioned, which was, okay, I could chase, I've made some money and now I could keep chasing more and more, more. And don't get me wrong. There is nothing. It's good to have goals and ambitions. Like it's good to have drive. But what I think we're both aligned on what we're trying to say here is it's very different when you believe that that is what makes you happy. Like it comes back to what I said at the start about being a kid who was playing rugby. I was good at rugby and I applied myself to rugby and I trained hard and I played hard when it was an expression of the fact that I just loved it, right? And then I started to achieve things, right? And then only when my mindset was like, oh, now you need this, 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 it became like these conceptual things that bogged me down. Now what, what we need to do is, Know that it's part of our, you know, nature as a human being to want to, you know, fulfill our potential and want to create and learn and connect and have ambition. But it's where we're doing that from. Is it from a place of lack that you need to achieve X, Y, and Z to be okay? Or is it from a place that I'm good as I am and I'm just going to go out and have a go? And you... You and I would have met people who are very wealthy, very successful, and you know straight away where they're coming from. Some are just the most free, humble, kind, open-minded people, and they're the ones that are the majority of the time are. They know that their their true value is not connected to their wealth or their mm. achievements, and then you meet some who s- unbelievably successful, but quite closed, quite you know like um, insecure are quite arrogant and it's not the finger point it's not their fault they're just part of deeply ingrained in that conditioning that it's like it's these things that make me who i am and i need to like hold on to that and protect that image you know and and it's obviously a balancing act though as well right you've spoken about obviously you were a successful athlete moving into business like you said you had no formal training it's this whole brand new world and you've spoken about having a little bit of experiencing for a period of time imposter syndrome. Mm. Talk to me about what that was like in the early stages and, and what you did, if it was anything or it was just time to get over that and realize like I am enough in who I am today. Yeah. I mean, I think any time I've ever achieved anything good in my life, I've had imposter syndrome. Like it, it's been my biggest challenge. I think like what I've learned is like I have – you know, a creative drive and a passion and energy and to go after things like I did with rugby and now with my business. But when like good, when, when things start being achieved and unlocked and like you have an image that people think of, this is what you do and who you are. That's when I start to get like a bit in my head about that. And it takes away from what got me to achieve certain things, which was just an expression and a love and a passion and a drive, you know? And so I think that that imposter syndrome is it's probably something that like all humans experience in different things, but it's how you navigate it. You know, I think what I've learned is it's normal to feel insecure or feel like you don't really know what you're doing or um, that maybe, yeah, like you don't have the answers or, or even times where you feel like you're not good enough or you're not worthy of what you're doing. I think what I've learned is the human mind like fluctuates, like, no human is going to go about life without having negative thoughts, but it's knowing that negative thoughts come and go and like you just don't take them too seriously. Like I remember, and I think all athletes would be able to probably um, relate to this, but going into some of the biggest games in your life, like you have negative thoughts that come and go, you know, and you're like, and I'm sure you like as an actor and going to big business meetings as well, like, you would have negative thoughts like, mate, you, like you're you're gonna be shit today, or and then it starts going this narrative, oh you're too tired, or you know, oh like that hamstrings a bit tired, or uh, you know, like oh the wind is too windy, it's gonna be a tough game out there. But then you just realize like, 
none of that is real. It's just transient thoughts. Mm. And it's how much you like attach to them and take them seriously as to whether they can actually dictate anything. And what I've realized is like, it's not, it's just normal, but you can't, you can't try to like, I think by, by trying to get your mind clear and get them away, you're almost making it seem like they're more meaningful than what they are. You know, like you ask any, any amazing performer, some of the most unbelievable things they've done that like, if they were being honestly, like, like really honest with you, they would have had thoughts in their minds that were like doubting everything moments before that, but they just knew it wasn't true and just did it. Mm. Yeah. You, you come across as a very humble guy. Um, what is it in life that keeps you grounded? Do you think? Oh, I do. Oh, that's a good question. I, I think, I think sometimes I'm, I'm not that humble <laughs> and sometimes, and I, but I think my, or I think all of our true nature is humility. And I think when you attach to an, a concept of who you are, that's where like you, you, you get away from that innate humility, which mm. I think we all, it's, a, it's like a shared, like that's what love is. Like love is not just for your partner, love is for humanity and for things and for nature. And I think like love is the humility that, we're all the same really at the end of the day. And then when you know you're all the same and you're in it together, like you're humble. You mm. just do the right thing for people and for yourself. Whereas when you're attached to a concept of who you are, like that's why we can all say like we've met people who had who were this amazingly humble, kind person and then they had some success and it's like they've changed. It's not really their fault. Like they just didn't know that this image and concept of who they are now was they think it's real. But that's, it comes back right back to start. It's like the biggest blessing in my life, and it's it's people. It, it sounds strange to say it, but like losing my dad, it, it was something that opened my mind up like nothing ever before to question all those concepts. And the times I've had that imposter syndrome, or felt even like if I felt worthless, or or if I got too ahead of myself and I've been acting like an asshole, it brings me back to that, but, but who am I? And like, who am I is this, it's not an idea. It's a feeling. It's like a sense. It's like a sense of like, I'm, I'm, we're all, we're all in this together, you know? Mm. And yeah, I think that's the bit that is the humility. I think that's yeah. something we've all got. And I, like, you're right, like to, to, to have these big goals and ambitions for your life, there's, there's a healthy amount of ego we all have, we all have a need to have, in my opinion. Um, maybe the right world is grounded, a very grounded individual. But I think, like you said, re something you, you said just then really stood out, remembering all the same, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like speaking about like, I'm sure like you, you mentioned as a kid, seeing your father, or like you didn't really understand it fully, but all you wanted was, you, was your dad to be okay. And I'm sure now... As you've got older, you've, you've had better understanding of, you know, why he acted the way he did because of his, you know, his upbringing and his own experiences and, and, and the cards he was dealt at birth. And I heard this really interesting quote, and I think I've mentioned it once before. I can't even remember who said it, but I was talking about like forgiving our parents for, for, for their mistakes. And it's like, if you had their DNA and, and you lived the exact same life circumstances, life circumstances that they did, you do exactly the same things. And I, I feel like that's like a just absolute fact, mm. but that's humbling Yeah, because you see someone out there on the street and you like, it's easy to conceptually be like, how did you allow yourself to get there? But if you had their DNA, their experiences, like you would have, it's the same outcome, you know? And like that, that's humbling because it's like, wow, let's be grateful for the, DNA for the experiences, for the conditioning, for the path that we've been given that allows us to see and question things and find a clearer way forward. Because, and it's something that I'm also like so grateful because honestly, man, like I know for a fact the way I was raised and the path that I was on um, that we didn't really like go too much into before I had that realization of I'm going to give this rugby thing a real go. I, I honestly, I know. I had that in me to go that 
a, the wrong a, way, a, the other a way, wrong, right? wrong way, man. Mm-hmm. And like that's why I always feel humbled and grateful for opportunities. And also when I get away from myself of being like, no, I need more to be okay, I then strip it back to be like, man, like I'm just grateful like for this life, you know, like and I'm grateful for the opportunities and the challenges, you know, because like I, without a mindset that that's clear enough to be able to take on opportunities and challenges, you, you're literally, you're going to take the easy way out, you know? And yeah, man, like the, the, when I was in a, in a really tough time through, you know, my, my teenage years and stuff and making really bad decisions and doing some, things that were just really not good for me or people around me it was the easy way out like it was it was hard because I was getting into trouble and I was fucking messing up my life but it was the easier option than to make the decision to like face those challenges you know Mm. I just was choosing the escape route and that's the sad thing man because so many people don't realize there's another way and they just keep going down the escape route and then they dig themselves a hole yeah bro a hundred percent and and it, it's all about choices we always have choices in life whether it seems like we do or we don't there's always there's always two paths you can go down and the familiar route is the one that a lot of us choose most of the time but if you can sometimes you just need that circuit breaker or that friend or that conversation mm-hmm. with someone to make you realize that there is a different way to go about it and as human beings, sometimes it doesn't feel like we have a lot of control, but we have a lot yeah. more control over our lives yeah. as we think. We have a lot of con- lot more control over our, our minds than we think as well. And if you can control your mind, you can control your life. And mm. dude, I fucking wish we had more time. Yeah. There's so if you're ever in Sydney, we're gonna have to get you. I gotta get back to Sydney. Get man. back I to love Sydney. It, get back to Sydney. The good weather will be waiting yeah, for you, man. Um, because there's so much more I want to talk to you about. Kind of your journey, the process, the business now. On the on the products, pure sport. Now we got we got listeners around the world, predominantly Australia. Do you have a roadmap of you know when you can do more international expansion? What's coming next for the brand? Yeah, so we actually had a big strategy meeting today around uh, like we see Australia as an unbelievable opportunity, like the active lifestyle, um, the open mindedness of the individuals. Um, it, it's a perfect uh, a market market for us, and 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 like. We get so many messages requesting our products in Australia, um, and so it's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's the investment in the like TGA regulations, which you know Big very process. well with your business. It's not um, quick, and the kind of process and team resource to be able to execute that in order to to you know really launch into Australia properly. Um, but I I am really aiming for and hoping for a launch sort of mid next year hopefully sooner but depending on Mm. the resource and time it takes um but yeah man like the mindset and the the kind of like prioritization of living optimally uh it's it's a part of the australian culture it is you know like and that's something i love there like the amount of people going for an early morning run along the beach swimming after work gymming you know looking after yourself eating well you know, uh, the amount of like good bloody food and salads and juices and smoothies and, and that's part of the culture. And these products that, that we offer, you know, like the mushrooms and the CBD and the nootropics, they're there to people that live that lifestyle. It's to help optimize you to another level, mm-hmm. you know. And um, so, yeah, and, and as well, I love my time in Australia. I spent three years living in Sydney, absolutely love Sydney and be, give me a good excuse to try to get back there again. Yeah, yeah. And dude, I, I the reason I ask as well is selfishly because I I can't wait to become a customer, man. The the stuff you're all about, I can't I can't encourage people listening enough. I think you know our listenership is is pretty you know clued on about this stuff and is obviously in some way, shape, or form looking to improve their life, whether it be mentally, physically, or otherwise. Have a look at it. Jump on this website. I really, I really think you're you, you're doing amazing things. You obviously, are to to be in the position you are today. But I'm excited for you guys to come to Australia to open yeah. up. You know, more options in that space because even though we do have the right sort of mindset to be keen for that, I, I still think there's a, a a long way to go for us in terms of mm. being you know mass adopting or be, that that these sorts of products, these natural remedies that really treat the whole individual and their health rather than individual mm. causes. There's still a lot of work to, to go, but I think it's it's on the right path. Can't wait to have you back in town, man. You're you're welcome on the podcast anytime. As I said, I'd love to chat to you for another hour at least about everything. But thanks again, brother. I appreciate you giving us your time and uh, I'll be watching your, your journey from here. Thank you so much, man. And 
keep doing the amazing work you're doing and are trying to open up some meaningful conversations. And I think, yeah, hopefully people could take some value away. Yeah. Um, and, you know, every person's got a different perspective on things, but if if we're open enough to kind of hear one little glimmer of something that might be of value mm. and I'd say a big theme that kept coming up here is like just question yourself, yeah. question your own perspective and your own conditioning and your own like habits and routines and by doing that you might open up a new kind of pathway of of you know opportunity potential for sure the quality of the questions you ask dictates the quality of your life so exactly. anything question more question deeper um we'll put all your links in the, in the show notes but where's the best place for people to find you or pure sport yeah so the pure sport i mean we're we're really active on instagram uh so you get a really good insight into the brand um it's just pure sport one word uh mm -hmm. on instagram and then my own personal instagram grace and john hart um and the website pure sport is www.puresport.co so beautiful can find we'll us see there. you soon in australia and for the ladies listening give him give yourself a, give him a look you won't you won't regret that <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right cheers it. brother we'll wrap it we'll leave it there thank you so thanks, much thanks bro all right guys thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed this episode or you got something out of it do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do your friends a favor and share this with them and they can come along on this journey with us. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.